a question for you. Are we ensuring that every child in Florence County and in South Carolina is receiving the best opportunity possible in education? And are we running the most efficient school districts that we can? The mission of public education in South Carolina is to ensure that when a child graduates one of our high schools and walks across the stage to shake the hand and get that high school diploma that has my name on it and the state of South Carolina's name on it, the governor's name, that they're ready for success in college, in their career, and to be a good citizen. That's really what school is all about. And my burden that I hope I can share with you because you are the citizens of Florence County and South Carolina and this country is that we're doing that. Can every child receive the same opportunity? Not really. I live way out in the country, 30 miles from Walmart. I like that. And so I know things aren't quite as convenient for me as they may be for you right here in downtown Florence. But there are basic opportunities that every student deserves because we've got to get them ready because you need them. You need them for your employees. You need them to be the doctors and nurses when we all get old and need somebody to take care of us. We need them to be the leaders in government. So I'm going to share my burden with you today and hope that if you're not already joined me, <laughs> that you'll get on board. I think you have just by being here today. The mission of the United States Chamber of Commerce is to ensure that there is progress that supports the human potential. progress that supports the human potential. The mission of the Florence County Chamber of Commerce is you all build an environment right here in Florence County that everybody's life will be better. So, I'll quickly share with you some slides and then I hope we can talk with some questions at the end. Here's where we are right now. Fred's right and thank you for that beautiful introduction and touch my heart and I hope that I will always be courageous and, and bold. Here's where we are right now with COVID, how COVID has hit us and it has been a difficult nine months for all of us in every aspect of life and that's true in education too. We're trying to get back to as normal as possible. I tell folks in the press is here, we cannot guarantee 100% safety back in schools Never could, never will, but we're doing a pretty darn good job of it now as we are moving back to school. Our kids are wearing their masks, they're social distancing, we've got contact tracing, the rapid test will be here starting in the next week for some and in the next few weeks, so it's a pretty darn safe environment that our teachers and administrators and students have set up. So out of our 80 school districts in the state, uh, we have a little over 500 schools, 1,263 schools, a little, about half of them are back full five face-to-face -face five days a week. You can see the chart there, some four days a week. And we have 16 that are still just all virtual. Those are districts there. This shows you the map, the reddish color shows those that are back five days a week. Uh, the yellow shows those that are all virtual and um, I think we had one Marion County Board, I believe, voted last night to go back virtual due to the rise in cases. The blue is some type of hybrid. Uh, yes, we have a plan. We have a statewide plan, and districts have their plan. Uh, and those plans were written back in June-ish, May, June. We've learned a lot since then. Originally, we were saying just base it on the virus numbers. You know, if the spread goes up, you go virtual. Some people are still relying on that, but I would say that I've learned a lot. 
and we have to balance because we what we've learned is that kids are really struggling the virtual does work for some children I will say a few children it works but you've got to have a very motivated student and you've got to have a pretty well educated parent to sit there and fill in the gaps <laughs> you got to have access, and we've come a long way on access, which is a good lemonade story out of this pandemic. But generally, kids need to be in school, not just for instruction, but they need to be there for their social and emotional health, too. So with the virus numbers, now we're saying, look, we'll give you whatever you need. Fred served on the uh, Accelerate SC committee. We have spent a ton of the CARES Act funding on making schools safe. We bought over $50 million in PPE, uh, plexiglass to make the environment very, very safe. So I am encouraging schools to get back, get back as soon as you can. But you need to offer a virtual option. We're not forcing parents to send their children back. We're encouraging them to. If they need to stay home due to health reasons, that's fine. We'll offer you a virtual option. We'll go to the Next slide there, Lori. And I think that shows you some of the things that we have done. I won't spend a lot on this, but during the pandemic, we've, we we've held extra instructional days. We bought whatever. We've served over 21 million meals. Can you believe that? In the summer months, educators have been miracle workers. Food service folks have been miracle workers uh, through this, but we not only prepared 21 something million meals, we delivered them, handed them to kids at their houses, down dirt roads, and we did that overnight. They deserve such a pat on the back, our, all of our folks who are involved in education. You can see there are other things that we've done. We'll go on. And then this shows you some of the other needs, mental health counselors. Children are missing their friends. Children are missing those teachers who kind of look out for them. You know, there are some children who don't have the greatest situation at home. They need to come to school. And that's one of the real burdens that I have right now because what I'm hearing from some administrators is that the very children who need to be at school the most are the ones who are at home virtually. And that's not just for instruction. So we need to do everything we can to help get our students back in face to face. More mental health counselors, more social workers, and those services are being provided. One real success story is what we're doing in South Carolina. We're a leader in the country in telepsychiatry. Our Department of Mental Health came up with the idea a few years ago that we could offer psychiatric services to students because there are not that many doctors available and those needs are all over the state so they get those services now on a computer. That never stopped during the pandemic. We did over 100,000 services one-on-one -on -one with students during the pandemic. Isn't that fantastic? That's because we were ahead of the game there in planning so hats off to our mental health folks here. We'll go on to the next slide. Now, the other that I mentioned briefly is one of the, on March 16th, when every school in South Carolina was closed, <laughs> that happened on a Sunday afternoon. We actually held a phone teleconference with the superintendents, and I said, the governor is getting ready to announce. We thought it was gonna be on that Friday. It's gonna be tomorrow, folks. No school tomorrow. You gotta feed the kids, and you gotta do some kind of instruction with them. And they got it together overnight and started either passing out the computers to the children or paper uh, spots. We had about 160,000 families in South Carolina who had no internet access. And through Accelerate SC, we were given funds to purchase 20,000 hotspots, uh, excuse me, 120,000 hotspots that have been delivered out to families. We are paying the rental for that. We also found that there were some families who had the internet line going in front of their house. They couldn't afford to pay for the rent. So we're paying for that also. We first thought that we would only be able to do that through the end of this month. 
We've got funding now to do that through the end of the school year. I'm going to be talking to the legislature about continuing that in the future as we get this issue solved and make sure that every family in South Carolina has internet access just like we got electricity. I happen to live out in the country. As I mentioned, I'm the last house on the Mid-Carolina Electric Co-op line. But guess what? Mid-Carolina Electric Co-op two or three years ago started Carolina Connect. I got high speed internet in my house through my electric co-op. Good adults thinking ahead, getting the work done. There are other providers who want to be involved with this. So this is an issue that we are solving because everybody has come to the table to talk and work. So I'm really, really pleased at the progress we've made there. Okay. Now where are we academically? It is not a pretty picture. Uh, this is a slide that shows you our NAEP assessments. NAEP is a test that is given around the world in reading and math. Uh, a couple things you might want to know. It is a sample test. It's only given to 2% of the population. And, and there's, they're randomly picked. And so the statistician tells me that this is a good thing. Sometimes I still question it. But here's where we were in 2020. South Carolina fourth graders in reading were point uh, score at 216. The national average is 219. So we're a couple points behind there. Eighth graders, 259. National average, 262. Math, same kind of thing. We're several points behind. That was with the 2019 assessments. This was not given last year, and they, um, I don't anticipate that it will be given this year either. We assessed all of our children in South Carolina in the first 10 days when they came back from the pandemic. Some were tested at home, some tested in school, so it's not the usual apples to apples, but we had to know where they were. The data is coming in, we're evaluating it now, and it's showing just pretty much what we expected, but with one little surprise I didn't anticipate, the children have, some children in reading have been able to maintain their learning progress. They've been reading books at home, mom and dad's been helping them, and reading has not suffered as much as we thought it would. Isn't that interesting? But I think it's reading is something, if you read books, you can kind of stay up with your, with your learning levels. Some loss, fourth graders, fifth graders lost there, but the real loss has come in mathematics. And I think that's because it's more uh, scaffold. You, like, hey, you have to learn one thing to learn the next thing and on. And our tests are showing in some areas in fourth and fifth grade, some students, not all, but some students have lost as much as three years. That's alarming. That's why kids need to be getting back in school if we can make it happen. How are we gonna fix that? It's gonna take my principals and teachers say, we can do it if you just get them to us, get the students back to us. We can fix it and we need some time one-on-one -on -one with them. We need some more interventionists. We need some extra money to hire some people who are gonna come in and sit down one-on-one -on -one with Johnny and we can catch them up. So I'll be going to the legislature to ask for that funding. Educators can do it and I think then if it has it, we'll, we're gonna be assessing again in December before they go home and then we'll certainly assess throughout the spring. But we will get there. These folks are well trained. These teachers can do the work if we can just get back with the students. So that's the basic thing of what we need to do. In college and career readiness, on the other end, you see here, these are, uh, we give the ACT and the SAT, students can choose to take one or the other. All 11th graders are assessed. The composite score, we're a couple points behind the nation in both ACT and SAT. Um, that's been that way for a long time, and I'll tell you how it alters. The fewer students who take the test, the higher the scores. When we give it to all, we usually score a little bit below the national average. When we only test a certain percentage, we score above the national average. The success story for us is in advanced placement where we put a lot of money, a lot of emphasis. Those are college courses taught. The teachers are trained to teach them like they would be if they're in college. 
students have to take a test to see if they score three, four, or five, they can transfer that in for college credit. And 10 of the most popular advanced placement tests, eight of the 10 our students score above the national average. We've got work to do. We've got a long history to overcome. And it comes through really high quality instruction. It comes from getting to our students as soon as we can with more early childhood, high quality early childhood programs. And by the way, all the things that you are doing right here in Florence County, you have a dynamic early childhood program here in Florence County, in Florence District 1 and other places. We need to make sure that all students in Florence County are, are receiving that same type of high quality instruction. And I wanted to share this with you. Our overall high school graduation rate in South Carolina now hovers around 85%. Guess how you get to solve the graduation problem? This is it right here. College and career readiness. If high school students are working on something they really like and they can see where it's going to help them out for their future life, they stick with us. And that is through good, strong, technical college programs. If we can get them involved in something that they want to work on, whether it's welding or whether it's aeronautical engineering or whatever it might be, mechatronics, whatever hand skills test or of skills that they're working on, our graduation rate changes from 85% to 98%. Kids want to see something. They want meaningful work. That is why. Hats off to you here in Florence County for the work that you've done, not only at Florence Darlington Tech, but what you are doing in with the continuum. You want those students in Florence County to succeed, help them get to a really strong technical program. They may want to be a medical doctor, but they can go and be studying skills on programs at the continuum at Florence Darlington Tech. One of my favorite stories is when we announced that we were going to manage the Timmonsville School District. And uh, it, was, it was a sc scary, sad day at that school because folks were like, what is happening here? The state's taking over. Molly Spearman's here and she says she's going to be running things now. And I didn't quite look like the students are at Timmonsville. So they were kind of afraid of me, and I walked in the library, and there was a class of about 25, 30 students in there. They were forlorn, and I said, what would you like me to do to change your school? What do you want to see happen? Hands go up. The first young man I called on, Davion, I want to be a welder, and they won't let me go to the technical school. Another young lady, I want to be a nurse, but we had not got our equipment in yet this year. Y'all, it was May. <laughs> School was almost out and the equipment hadn't come in yet. So we're going to see what we can do. And I promise you it was literally one phone call to Florence One School District to say, would y'all help us out and let these kids come over? I see Porter Stewart back there. Thank you, Porter. Will you help us out and let the kids from Florence Ford go to your technical school? Absolutely. Well, in the meantime, the continuum opened up. And they had a couple open slots down at the continuum in welding. And we got a little bus, bought a little bus, and we bust the kids over there. Davion graduated. I went to his graduation outside in June over at Timsville. He's already got, he's on his, uh, he started working at one company not far from Timsville as a welder, and I think another company's already stolen him and paying him a lot more money, and he and his grandma have a much better life. So, thank you. So I'll finish with saying, going back to our question. Are we doing everything we can together and this is a hard job. Education is a very complex institution. I think we have learned through the pandemic 
how important it is and how intertwined it is with everything. When the schools closed down, life kind of shut down and everybody was saying, oh my word. <laughs> so we have to work together. Businesses depend on us to be running so mom and dad can come to work. <laughs> And you depend on us so that you can have employees. So I want to open it up for questions and dialogue right now, but I'll end with a question. Do you think that we are doing everything we can here in South Carolina and in Florence County to ensure that every child in our county has the best opportunity possible? And are we spending the taxpayers' dollars to run our districts as efficiently as we should as keepers of public trust? I hope the answer is yes. If it's not, I hope that you will work with me and all the educators, my good friend Tom Ewart here who served so admirably on the state board and I appreciate that. But my question to you is, if not, Let's work on it together. Thank you very much. <clears throat>